My dearly beloved in Christ, today on the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, we have the story in the Gospel of our Lord raising from the dead a young man whose mother was a widow and he was her only son. And you can imagine, because it says that a large crowd was there to witness it, you can imagine the enthusiasm of the people, the surprise, the joy at this wonderful miracle. In fact, the final words of today's gospel are the acclamation of the people. A great prophet has risen among us and God has visited his people. And in fact, we read the same words on other occasions where the people shouted out with joy at witnessing a wonderful miracle of our Lord. A great prophet has risen among us, if they only knew. Not just a prophet, and not even the greatest of the prophets, but the very Messiah that they had been yearning for, their forefathers prayed for and looked forward to, was now in their midst. The very Son of God. And not only that, but they went on to say, God has visited his people. And certainly, Almighty God visited through our divine Lord, the Son of God, visited the people, working so many miracles. But has God withdrawn himself from us in these times? We do not witness at least the type of miracles that our Lord worked, and so many. And we read the same in the lives of saints, certainly not as many, but we read about saints who cured people, even into the 20th century. Holy men like Brother Andre of Mount Royal in Canada, or St. John Riviani in the 19th century, and so many who worked numerous miracles. At Lourdes, so many individuals were cured. So we see so many miracles like that, and yet we don't see them in our own times. And so we are perhaps inclined to say, well, God has not visited the earth like he did in ages past. But let us not forget that God is still working, but not in so far as physical cures and miracles as were witnessed in past ages, but God is working with souls. He is working by grace. And there are wonderful conversions that still take place. And so God is visiting his people. He is working in a secret way, you might say, by his grace. And priests especially have witnessed such miracles of grace. Individuals who completely change their lives, who perhaps bounce around from one church to another searching for the truth, and then they finally find it. And they embrace it and live it. And it is a wonderful thing to see. And all we can say is, that is the grace of God at work in souls. So there is this entire different world other than the one we see. We see and we sense material things with our five senses, especially sight or hearing or touch, taste, smell. We experience this material world of our own bodies and of the nature that is around us. But let us not forget that there is a, an entirely different world, a spiritual world that is very real, even though we cannot see it or sense it. For instance, if we could only see them, there are thousands of angels in this sanctuary, prostrate, worshiping our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, attending the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We each have a guardian angel. So if we could only see all of the angels, we would be surprised and, and filled with joy at such a wonderful sight. And again, they are very real, even though we don't see them. What about our soul? Our souls are also very real. A wonderful being created by God. In fact, the Catechism says that God created man in his image and likeness, but this image and likeness of God are chiefly seen in the soul 
created to his own image. But we don't see that. It is invisible to our human eyes, but nevertheless, again, very real. And God is working in souls by his grace. If we could see souls, we would see those souls that are clean and white and pure and glowing with the life of sanctifying grace. And then we would also see the souls black in sin, deprived of the life of grace. And then those souls that perhaps are tainted with venial sin, but nevertheless the life of God is there. And there were some saints who had this gift of seeing souls. One of them was St. Joseph of Cupertino. And he would even tell people, it would be a crowd of people, and he would say to someone, you need to go to confession. And it got to the point that those in the state of mortal sin would avoid him because they didn't want to be admonished in the presence of others. So he had that gift of seeing it. And can you imagine, you go into town and you see people everywhere. And sometimes I wonder to myself, how many of these souls are in the state of sanctifying grace right now? I can't see their souls. I see the faces. I see the body. God looks down from heaven and he sees the soul. And how many of these souls are in the state of sanctifying grace? So that's this invisible world, this very real world, but one that we don't perceive. And God is visiting his people every day by his grace. The grace of God Coming down into the world is like the drops of rain when it rains, and especially imagine when there's just a downpour. All of this rain, these drops of rain coming fast and thick and heavy. And that's the grace, that's like the grace of God every day, even without our asking. So many graces that come down into our soul. And again, these graces are very real, even though they cannot be perceived by the senses. What does the Catechism say about grace? It says that grace is a supernatural help from God given to us for our salvation. There is sanctifying grace, a very share in the life of God. Habitual grace, it is also called, because it remains in the soul until or unless it is driven out by a mortal sin. And then there is actual grace. Those graces from God that help us to do His will that help us to counter temptations and to persevere in a manner pleasing to God. And God will always give us the graces we need to serve Him, to fight the good fight, to win the victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. And sometimes the temptation can be so strong that we feel the grace that I have is not enough. I need more. All we need to do is ask for it, and God will give us that grace. He will visit his people with his grace. All we need to do is ask. When we feel that the temptations are almost overwhelming, then pray and continue to pray, asking God for his grace, and he will give it. So let us remember this invisible world, this wonderful world, this spiritual world of souls, of the angels of grace, wonderful things, but things we cannot perceive with our bodily eyes, but yet we know they exist. And so God does continue to visit his people. We are not left orphans in this age in which we live, but God continues to visit us with his grace if we do our part, asking for that grace and cooperating with it and using it to work out our salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.